joining the Sports Nation back to work from the comforts of home for the first time ever. Your day-to-day play-by-play presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Monday, May 18th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Springville interior decorator, Jerem Jordan. I might be by the end of all this. I mean, uh, my wife really helped out, but here we are at home. Uh, so I got a couple of books here. I'm trying to think what the most interesting book is. Probably Cougar Tales. Paul James wrote this. Uh, I just read it recently again. It was, it was awesome, man. Some great stories from uh, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Are, do you, are there any leather-bound books in that bookcase, though? Uh, yeah, up above. Uh, we used to get leather-bound <laughs> books from uh, the church every December. And that was fun. <laughs> it smells of rich mahogany in here. It's awesome. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, as long as those are included, we are good. Uh, again, our first at-home edition of BYU Sports Nation requires a big-time lineup, including the new guys in charge of BYU football recruiting. Jason Ayu and Jack DeMooney will join us. Plus, who could possibly beat out the likes of John Beck in the best to ever wear number 12 of BYU and BYU's newest basketball commit, Tanner Toulson, will join us on a whole new edition of Big Deal, No Deal. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU Hoop signs Tanner Toulson, a 6'5 guard from Vancouver, Washington. Shout out to Vancouver. I lived there for a year and a half. Toulson is the son of former Cougar great Andy, a former BYU TV broadcaster as well, cousin to Jake Toulson. Uh, Tanner was the 2020 Washington Mr. Basketball and 4A Greater St. Helens League MVP. He's good, man. Toulson will serve a mission first, then return for the 2022 23 season is as you mentioned we will chat with the newest hoopster let's keep it with basketball BYU basketball graduate transfer Matt Harms listed at number 48 in the best NBA prospects list of 2021 this according to USA Today's early look at the 2021 NBA draft at seven feet three inches Harms is not surprisingly incredibly accurate around the hoop in fact he shot 79 percent within five feet of the basket. Uh, Gonzaga had two in the top 30 of that list, by the way. And then Kessler Edwards of Pepperdine was on that list. So uh, how about the WCC with uh, four repping on that? Yeah, well represented. James, call me Jim now, MP, is named to the 2020 All-Pro football Focus college football second team. He's the second best returning center behind Oklahoma's Crane Humphrey based on PFF grades and wins above average metrics. So look at James Empey continuing to garner uh, honors as an offensive lineman. We've talked about this. It's hard for us to quantify how good a lineman is. Just people say they're good, and we go, oh, yeah, I guess they're good. But James Empey, call him Jim, is really good. Yeah, Brady Christensen is too, and we hope that Tristan Hodge takes the next step. We think that's the best position group on the BYU football team, right? Deepest. Yeah, yeah. Brigham Young University officials say they may wait all the way until July to finalize fall semester plans. In a three-tweet thread from the official BYU Twitter account, the university said it is studying a number of options for fall semester. The first priority is health and safety of the on-campus community, and a final decision, again, may not be made until July. I'm totally fine with that. Let's wait as long as possible until we have as much information and then make the decision. Amen. I don't know why anyone would call off something way in the future unless there were these major plans associated with it. Guess what? BYU is going to have a fall semester. It's whether it's at home, like a lot of winter semester was, and now spring is, and then summer, right? I'm with you. Wait until you you need to make a decision. And then the question is, if there's no students on campus, are we still playing college football? And there's a lot of debate about that one. Time to all rise and shout. Let's bring on what's trending. BYU football has a new dynamic duo to lead the recruiting charge in the Kalani Satake era. Jason Ayu recently announced as the new executive coordinator of recruiting and player personnel. He's joined by Jack Namuni, Mr. Hashtag himself, who will work as the new executive coordinator of on-campus recruiting and community player relation. Jaron, what kind of impact will Jason Ayu and Jack Namuni have on football recruiting at BYU? I think this is a great move, mainly because we know that these guys understand the process as dads. So obviously, Chaz Ayu is at BYU. Uh, His dad, Jason, was there. And of course, Jack has a son that is in the recruiting mix with Cougars. So it's a thing that they know what other teams are doing to court those guys. 
they've seen it. They're experiencing it now in the case of the Demuni family. So I love that. They played at BYU. They understand how unique this is. But they also get this piece, and we'll talk to them coming up as well, that BYU guys don't just show up at BYU anymore. Some of them do, right? But you need to actively be recruited and courted. We heard from Mark Pope last week. You did an Instagram Live with uh, Kalani. I did one with Mark. Mark said that Jake Toulson said, Coach, are you going to recruit me to BYU? You have to go after these guys. And Mark does, and BYU gets Jake, and he helps BYU become this top 20 team, right? And that's the case for a lot of these high school and junior college and grad transfer guys. They need to be given reasons why they should come to BYU. They can't, we can't just assume anything, and I don't think they assume very much. I think they also get social media. We've seen a huge influx of better social media game from BYU football recruiting. If you're not following them, they're a fun follow now, informative things I didn't know, right? And uh, it's, it's good. So I think this is a step in the right direction for BYU. The next step is just getting them more support because Moose Bingham said the other day that um, – what BYU is doing is just having a couple people on this staff and they're going to grow this more, but there are other bigger schools that have a lot more people, including even Utah state. So I think BYU is taking steps to address a need here. Yeah. For one, they have a lot of passion and their personalities display that just see Jack DeMooney's Twitter account. Uh, goodness, <laughs> who else is putting on their old Jersey running around with a huge stretch wide flag around their yard hoisting things up and playing the Cougar fight song for the entire neighborhood to hear. I'm pretty sure a 55 plus community complained about that. That that's Jack. That really happened. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) That's, that's Jack to Mooney though. Few people love BYU and will sell the BYU experience as much as guys like Jason Ayu and Jack to Mooney. Now they've been granted responsibilities And I know they welcome them. And uh, I think they're going to shoot their shots with some high profile guys. And most importantly, Jerem, the highest rated recruits that are members of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they're going to sell the BYU experience because they both lived it. And as you pointed out, uh, they have family members involved here pretty heavily. So uh, I like that they are selling the BYU experience from a point of it, uh, One, we lived it, we did it, we love the university, it bleeds through us, and so I like the passion that they bring. It kind of reminds me of the Bronco Mendenhall approach, where he went after people that loved BYU. They're going to find people that love BYU, and there's a pretty good track record there, so I'm on board for this. Okay, topic two, Tanner Toulson's the latest legacy player to join the Cougars in men's hoops. Uh, among other sports, and that's to say a former son or daughter of a former player. Spencer, does BYU basketball and football need legacy players to be successful? It's as simple as this. Did BYU basketball need TJ Haas, Jake Toulson, and Dalton Nixon to be successful last season? The answer to that question is unequivocally yes. The best season BYU basketball puts together in almost a decade features a wealth of legacy players, which brings us to our stat of the day. Three of the top five scores, talking points per game, for BYU basketball last season, Jaron, were legacy players. TJ Haas, Jake Toulson, and Dalton Nixon all on the top five in points per game. Uh, Yeah, legacy players are needed to be successful. Religion, standards, family are a unique and major part of the BYU experience. And hey, even Zach Selyus, to a degree, is a legacy player. His sister, Nancy, played for BYU women's basketball. So absolutely they need legacy players to be successful and if we if we're talking football you already brought up Chaz Ayu the Ayu family name is huge in BYU football James Empey Jaron Hall Isaiah Kafusi, Keenan Peely the Romney brothers I mean the list goes on unequivocally yes BYU needs legacy players based on what BYU is and the type of player that they can recruit I think a few years ago I might have said no but now I say yes because BYU is not getting all of the best or uh, the majority of the best LDS talent anymore. Stanford and Utah are plucking from BYU quite a bit. Washington has even dipped their toe in that pool. USC, right? Um, Technology is different. Now a kid from Hawaii can go anywhere. Like 30 or 40 years ago, they just couldn't get film on them, so they'd go to Hawaii or BYU or Utah, right? So, um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think it's fun, too. Like, obviously, we're always looking for storylines. And it's a great storyline if you have a son or a brother or a sister or a cousin or whatever of someone. And BYU is, is a unique place, as we know, and this audience knows, 
that, yeah, there's this connection that goes beyond just you, right? It's your family and your family's family. And, it, and it's just fun. It, isn't that the part of the gospel message, right? It's like family is in <laughs> and, it, and it's fun when you have split, like someone went to Utah, someone went to BYU, like that happens too. Or like the Krugers from Mountain View and Orem, like, oh, could they have been BYU guys like down the street? But it's, it's all good. And it's really fun. I think when you get legacy guys and they probably need them in football and basketball, I think it's those two sports. I don't think it applies to the other sports, by the way, men's volleyball is like Gabby Garcia Fernandez from uh, Puerto Rico and Mickey <laughs> from Finland and Will Stanley, not LES from Hawaii. Like men's volleyball makes it work, but I think football men's basketball. Yes. You need them. Yeah. And there are a handful of guys we expect to play bigger roles than our legacy guys in the future. Isaac Rex, Hank Tui Pelotu, Troy Warner, Shimon Willis, uh, and we could name a few more. So I think it's a big deal. And yeah, it's just fun too. It really is. It's just fun. Okay, coming up, the best to wear number 12. Lots of good candidates. Plus, the new BYU football recruiting dynamic duo of Jason Ogu and Jack DeRooney join us. What are they going to bring to the table? This is BYU Sports Nation. I am Jack DeRooney. Hashtag ho! On the latest voiceover with Greg and Chad, Greg Rebell and Jason Shepard talk with BYU football coach Kalani Sitake about the shutting down spring practices, how likely the college football season is, new staff assignments, and how the NFL views players from BYU. Check it out on the BYU TV Sports YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram account. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live from our houses with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton. You just heard from Jerem Jordan. And we are now pleased to welcome in a couple of guests at the same time, the new executive coordinator of recruiting and player personnel, Jason Ayu, and the new executive coordinator of on-campus recruiting and community player relation, Jack DeMooney. They both join us via Zoom on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. There's a lot happening on the screen right now, guys, uh, and we'll try and handle the madness. As long as Jack decides not to make a TikTok video in the middle of this, I think we should be okay, right, Jack? I got you. I won't do that. No, I won't do that. I promise you. I'm in the basement. I'm not up in the living room. I'm good. Okay. I was hoping you'd have your jersey on. Right? Uh, man, you know what? Just because you asked, I'm going to probably maybe, – maybe I might get that in a little bit. Hold on one second. <laughs> I don't lie, Jack. I know it's underneath your sweatshirt right now. It is. <laughs> Hold on one second. Don't be careful what you wish for, guys. Remember, <laughs> the world hashtag I am Jack the Mooney. You guys be careful what you wish for. Hey, two million you are. are. Two point two million followers on that TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let let's start there, Spence, because Jack, I I don't know what you envisioned in terms of that particular TikTok, the dance with your family. First off, you've got the moves. We had heard you had the moves. We've heard about you dancing at whatever club that was in Provo in the 90s, right? Uh, Ivy near Towers. Center. What's it called? Ivy Towers. Ivory Towers. Listen, they you know, 2.2 2 2 million views on that? Wait. If you go to Instagram, let me tell you, my friend, it was almost four point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's right. Wow. Wow. Not that he's counting. Not that I'm counting. That's right. Jason knows I'm a humble guy, man. I don't do those kind of things. I just text it to him whenever he tells me uh, that, you know, when, <laughs> whenever I want to show him something or, or show off to him. But it was about $4 million. Yeah. But it was crazy. I didn't, man, I didn't expect it to happen. And how, how it happened was my daughters were dancing in the living room. I was cooking and I wanted to get out. I was trying to cook dinner. And they said, can you do this with us real quick? And then I said, wait, the only way I'll do it is if I put my BYU gloves on. And my sweats that this guy got me, Jason got me. So I put it on, and the, the rest was history, you know? You don't know. When I heard that song, that's computer love. That's back in the 80s, right, Jay? That's <laughs> it. Our time. When that song came on, he just... Natural. Kills. You know, everything <laughs> came back. My moves came back. Jack, you're clearly the most popular social media personality in your home, right? Uh, you know... Right now, I have a competition between me and my daughter. She's trying to catch up to me, but she, she ain't, she, 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 I'm, I, I, I want to be, I, I think I am, but now they're all trying to catch up to my level. They're not on my level yet. They don't, like how they say, they don't want this smoke, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we need to add something to your job title, Jack. Uh, not only are you uh, the executive coordinator of on-campus recruiting and computer, uh, co- I guess, community player relation, but you're also the BYU athletics TikTok specialist, right? Can we throw that in there? Absolutely. Like we can do that. That's fine. But I'm going to tell Jason to pay me more if you do that. You know? 
<laughs> Jason, let's talk about job responsibilities and how things are going to change for you uh, with these with these new titles. So, um, how much will your job change on a day to day basis from what you were previously doing? Uh, for those that aren't aware of what was going on internally. Yeah. So before I was, uh, it, it kind of merged, you know, with the COVID nineteen, and uh, you know, uh, uh, we've lost a couple personnel. Lemma moved on, and, and Tasha Bell's moved on. They did a great job. Uh, so with COVID-19, the freeze, it kind of merged. So we're taking on the, our other responsibilities in addition to our, our new titles and our new responsibilities as far as recruiting. So I'm still the NFL liaison. I'm still uh, – we've kind of meshed together with me and, and John uh, Swift, our DFO, and Jack, you know, with academics and with different, different aspects that we were already carrying. Um, but my main focus right now is recruiting and player personnel. And so just roster management and – and recruiting, that's huge for us, so. So I wanna talk about the active recruiting that you do um, in, in terms of high school guys, uh, JC guys, grad transfers, that's one element. Another of it, uh, element of it is what you mentioned, which is the management of the roster. Absolutely. So obviously there's a ton of return missionaries. This is something that BYU embraces more than any other school, of course. Um, yet it can be a challenge. And you've talked publicly about, hey, there's a bit of a scholarship crunch and we have some guys, right, that have come home and may not go back out because they've served 20 plus months or whatever. So is, is that the biggest challenge you're facing right now is trying to figure out how to manage that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big deal because, you know, obviously it's NCAA guidelines. You don't have 85 scholarship kids, uh, players on the team at any given time. That's freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Uh, there's active in the fall, and then we have a, a limit of 123 total. So the rest are walk-on preferred walk-on. So when our, you know, our players are going on missions, they're coming back because we have such a finite rule of how many we could have. We have to be able to, you know, have these conversations and say, hey, we, we just don't have a state for or a spot for you. You know, we don't have a. We got to wait until, you know, we had you planned to come back in 2022 or 2021, and so we're just kind of. It's just a constant. Uh, jumbling and uh, of roster, you know, of roster managers. So we had the, the right 85 guys for the fall that could come in and help us right away. So, uh, J Jason, I know Jeremy's a guy that appreciates spreadsheets. So have you become a master of spreadsheets, managing all of this uh, as guys come and go? Yes. yes, I have become a an Excel guy right now. And so I've got spreadsheets. I got guys that become you know coming and going. And yeah, my first probably my first month and a half. Um, you know, before we can even figure out how many scholarships we can, we can offer, we got to see where we're at to see what positions are available. You know, we may, we may love a, a, a receiver, but if we have no spots, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just constantly managing and, you know, every position has an assigned number. Um, you know, there's 41 scholarships on each side of the ball. And then you have a couple that are special teams to equal our 85. And so just trying to give and take, like, you know what? We need an extra quarterback, take away from the offensive line, and vice versa. So it's constantly – it's a very fluid deal, and it's something that we've done a good job with, with our coaches being on the same page and, and everyone just being on the same page and working together, you know, and uh, trying to get our manage, our roster managed proper. So. You guys have been on the staff for a couple of years, but um, have you had to be the bad cop to some people where you've said, hey, I'm new in this job, and shoot, we don't have a scholarship for you? Has that, has that been something you've had to do, and has that been uncomfortable? Yeah, you know, it, it's something that it doesn't really come from me. It comes from our coaches. Our coaches build a great relationship with these players, and, uh, you know, they've been pretty forward and honest from the, from the get-go, right? And so they've had these relationships like, hey, we don't have a spot for you right here in, in, in September, but we have one for you in January, and just having different conversations. And then, like I said, it all starts with relationships, and building those relationships with the families and with the parents and, and with, the, uh, with the crew himself, being able to have these, this dialogue. And sometimes it's crucial conversations, you know, that you're having to have. But they understand where we're at. And, you know, as long as our communication is good, uh, which we've always strived to have better, better communication, once that's good in that relationship, then it's, they can understand where we're coming from as well. The men in charge of recruiting for BYU football, Jason Ayu and Jack DeMooney with us on BYU Sports Nation. Jack, obviously, you're going to work closely with Jason, um, literally and figuratively. Um, mm -hmm. But how does your day-to-day -day differ from that, what Jason does? Um, so, so, so what I do is I'm, I'm, I, I do the uh, unofficial visits that come in uh, as well as the official visits. So 
we work together to make sure that we, we try to plan and, and make sure that we, we make it uh, uh, special for these recruits. But uh, everything else remains the same. So like how Jason was telling you, my, our job description, uh, the only part that changes is the recruiting portion. So we still, we still do the same thing, but we work hand, uh, side by side to make sure that we find those recruits and make sure that things are going out as far as mailers, which uh, Jay does a good job at. Uh, and making sure that, like how you said, managing the roster. And so, um, you know, just being, he's a very, he, he does a great job at executing and doing the things that he needs to do. I'm just there to uh, uh, making sure that I can input whatever is needed. And, um, you know, whenever he needs me, I can, I can be there just to, to make sure that we, we, we have an effective recruiting process that we can make sure that um, when we bring in these, these recruits that, um, you know, we, we give them a special, special experience here at BYU. So, just working with Jason and, and being on the same page, being uh, doing the teamwork that we need to do is 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 going to be a big deal for us and something that I think we're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna bring uh, you know we're gonna make a big impact here at BYU. So we're looking forward to that. It's been it's been huge to have Jack. You know, um, me and him are like peanut butter and jelly, salt and pepper. <laughs> we're 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 uh, fire and ice, lightning and thunder. We work well, very well together. So there's nothing that we do that we don't talk to each other about and bounce ideas off of. One of the great things to have with Jack is, you know, going through the experience with my son, going through the whole recruiting deal. And I'm, you know, Raider uh, with Jack is, is very current. He's seen what's going on out there. So we talk constantly about, hey, what about this idea? What about this? I saw this. What do you think about that? And so just having that dialogue to be able to, pick up the phone and, and talk to Jack, like, Jack, what do you think? You know, what do you think about this mailer? What do you think about this graphic? What do you think about this? You know, it, it's, been, it's been pretty valuable. It's nice to have someone I can talk to and then relate to and, and bounce ideas off of, so. And it's been really good. It's been really good because on social media, we're able to, you know, uh, um, uh, share ideas. And, uh, and we see it, uh, a lot of people that, the feedback that we get in there is, is, is really positive as far as uh, trying to get our ideas out there and trying to, make these recruits feel very special and we try to pay attention to these these recruits as they you know the best way we can and and and, and just sell BYU that's our main focus is just sell BYU you know it's something that we we're going to take pride in doing this this coming year and let's address that because whenever a new coach or a new staffer is hired everyone's like we're going to be aggressive we're going to go after the top like everyone says it right but what and you guys are certainly going after it how is it that you're, you're trying to get the best talent that is a member of the church and that isn't, and that is a great fit? How are you doing this? Well, you know, that's a great question, uh, Jeremy. So when we first got involved, when we got, you know, when we got assigned these new responsibilities, we spent uh, quite a bit of time, me and Jack, before COVID-19, locked ourselves in an office and just talked about what is it that we're doing? What's our strategy? How we're going to go accomplish it? What are the things that we're trying to keep, you know, key elements that we're going to try to recruit and, 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 and try to share and to remind recruits about, about BYU? And the biggest thing is communication. These, uh, these young men, these student athletes, this, this generation is all about what have you done for me lately? And if you're, not, if you're not relevant in the social media world, if you're not relevant when they open up their mailbox, when you're, if you're not relevant when you see handwritten cards, it's just very easy to get lost. You know, and these guys equate, this generation equates what they see physically when they open up the mailbox, when they see their Twitter, see their DMs with love, right? And so we got to do a great job of showing these recruits that we love them. We're taking the time. Our, every Friday, our coaches come in and they'll handwrite cards every single Friday. We, we try to send out mailers every Friday is my day where we come into the office and, and mail out mailers as well as as well as uh, handwritten cards, and our coaches doing do an incredible job. And uh, but that's that's the biggest thing is just communication. They need to hear from us. They need we need to no longer can we. And I think the perception was out there, and right or wrong, you know, perce perception is reality. Is that um, uh, that just by simply wearing the why, and that we represent the church school, that these LDS athletes will come to us regardless of what whatever we do, and that's not the case. You know what I mean? And we got to show forth just as much effort and love for these young men to, the, to remind them there's, there's no place like BYU, none, zero. Like I said before, you can imitate it. You can't replicate it. You can't replicate the LDS experience here at BYU. You cannot. We can do it all. We check 
every single box that any recruit at any level is trying to look for here at BYU, we would check it. But there's some things that we do that's over and beyond that no one else can. I, I put, I'll stack us up against anybody, P5, in the state, whatever. They can't bring what we bring to the table as far as the whole BYU experience, which is something that are, we're, we're reminding we're reminding these, uh, this younger generation that you can achieve. All of us that have been here, all our parents have been here, they know what the BYU experience is. They know what that BYU is to them. You know, they know, I know what it was to me. Jack knows what it was for him. You guys know, you know, all our coaches that have been here, they know what that is. But being able to show that, you know, on a weekly basis or sometimes on a daily basis is a big challenge for us. And that's what we're trying to do. And so, and I think I think I think we do a good job because uh, you know, like how Jason said, my son's giving, being recruited right now by a lot of schools, and uh, even though he's still committed to BYU, uh, and you see all the, the the mailers come in every week, and you see all the attention he gets every week. But now, uh, um, we, we 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 when we got together, it was like, man, we got to give these kids attention. You see the same thing that other schools are sending. We are on the same level as far as sending these mailers and everything, showing them the love that they need to to, to uh, receive. And I think we're doing a good job because, you know, the parents that I've talked to who have recruits, they, they say, man, thank you guys, man. Our, our son, is, they love all the mailers that they're receiving, you know. And so that's something that we, we, we wanted to do from the beginning. We started doing and, and we're seeing the, the, the positive results right now. So it's a, something we're, we're heading in the right direction. Uh, between those speeches and uh, four million views of Jack's TikTok, I'm ready to sign. So uh, hey, can I can I come in go. right now? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we'll make a spot for you, Spence. Let's go. <laughs> yes, permanent team manager. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. The only uh, thing is, you got the only thing is, you gotta if you if you come on our team, you gotta put up your jersey like me, show it around, and you gotta run around. That's the first. That's the first audition you gotta pass. <laughs> That's a, that's a guarantee. Okay, before we go, uh, Jason, I need to ask you about the picture behind you. What, what is this setup that is behind you in this uh, Zoom call? You know what? So that picture is my father as a, as a tailback here at BYU. Charlie. With, uh, Coach, Coach Edwards, way back in the day. And so that's, just, that's the whole reason why I'm here. He's my hero. This is the reason I came to BYU is because of my father. You know, and so I was – I was actually born in Provo, raised in California. The team doctor delivered me during the time, um, during that time. And so, you know, my father never had any pictures at all um, of him at BYU. We had these, those old nine millimeter, I don't know what those tapes were way back. And we used to watch his game, but he had no pictures. And so last year's Christmas, um, I asked Jaron and his staff, if there are any pictures anywhere that I can, can have of my father when he was playing, and I presented that to a series of pictures for Christmas. And that's one of them right there. So uh, it was awesome. So yeah, I have my dad there because my dad is, is my hero. And the reason why I'm here at BYU is because my father. So, and is that Gifford Nielsen in 75, I assume? That's it, baby. That's Gifford wow. right there. Cool. There we go. So that's pretty cool. Cool picture. Outstanding stuff. Well, congratulations to both of you on uh, the job changes and the upgrades, uh, clearly you're committed to the challenge that is recruiting at BYU, and uh, we wish you both the best moving forward. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma on this Zoom call. Let's so go. You guys can go and do the work. Let's go. Let's do it. Go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Go Cougs, baby. Let's go. All right. Go Cougs. Jack DeMooney, Jason, all you. Thanks so much for the time, guys. Thank you. All right, Jerem, I don't all know right. about you, but uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's get the jerseys. Let's go, man. I, yeah, I, I got some work to do to match those guys in terms of the energy and the excitement in the organization. Right? That's awesome. Okay, coming up, another tool since coming to BYU, we're talking to him. And as always, a reminder that uh, those guys brought you on the Deseret First Credit Union Highline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. And don't forget, Jerem, the best to wear it coming up on this unique edition of BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation at home. Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Let's whip it! BYU Hoop signs Tanner Toulson, a 6'5 guard from Vancouver, Washington. Toulson is the son of former Cougar great Andy and cousin to Jake Toulson. He was the 2020 Washington Mr. Basketball. Awesome. He'll uh, serve a mission first, be back for the 2022-23 season. Looking forward to uh, chatting with Tanner Toulson coming up. BYU basketball graduate transfer Matt Harms listed as the 48th best 
NBA prospect in 2021. This according to USA Today's early look at the 2021 NBA draft. We need to have the 2020 draft first. At seven feet three inches, Harm shot 79% within five feet of the basket. That's, that's just in. That's good. Dalton yeah. Nixon is BYU's 2020 All-American Athlete of the Year Award recipient, as awarded by the National Strength and Conditioning Association. I didn't know that was a thing, and he's on the all swole team. That's, uh, that's legit. Yes, the ultimate flex. BYU football center James Empey named to the 2020 All-Pro football-focused college football second team. He's listed as the second-best returning center behind only Oklahoma's Crean Humphrey. I didn't know there was a man named Crean. I like that. And BYU says it could wait as late as July to finalize fall semester plans academically. The school is studying a number of options. So uh, as we discussed earlier, this is, this is good for BYU to just figure it out as late as they can. BYU head gymnastics coach, Guard Young, named to the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Committee. Young will help govern policy and procedure through August of 2024. He has previously been on the men's committee as an assistant while serving for National Power Oklahoma. Men's volleyball middle blocker Gavin Julian is named to the USA Volleyball U21 Junior National Team, 6'8" freshman redshirted this past season he's going to be a good one and how about our boy peter quest the former oh. byu golf all-american he's rocking it not surprising he finished tied for 23rd in his pro debut at the scottsdale open in arizona he earned just over 1400 dollars in that debut his former byu teammate patrick fishburn finished tied for 34th in the same tournament that brings us to our Monday edition of The Best to Wear It, a summer project that has our research team working to determine which BYU athlete was the best to wear each number. We're counting up to 99, and today we focus in on the number 12, Jerem. There were some great football players that wore 12, but the greatest number 12 of BYU is Ryan Millar of men's volleyball. Uh, played from 96 to 99. He's the, he's the best player in men's volleyball history. I, I don't think there's like a huge argument here. Number one in kills all time, number one in blocks. Challenge, challenge that, right? Uh, fourth time All-American, first time three times. Uh, volleyball Magazine Player of the Year in 99, when BYU won its first national championship. Three time first team All-MPSF. Uh, part of that 99 team that is the greatest team in BYU men's volleyball history. 30-1 and one when he was a senior with Asi Antonetti. Three Olympics, one gold. Uh, in, in Beijing in 2008. It's just, he's just awesome. Oh, you can't beat it. And you need a resume like that to best guys like Gary Scheide and John Beck, who is our honorable mention today. John Beck, quarterback at BYU from 2003 to 2006, over 11,000 career yards. He was a second round pick in the NFL draft, third in passing yards at BYU, fourth in touchdowns over his career. He had 17 games of 300 plus passing yards. Woo! Remember those days? Remember how fun that was? Good grief. <laughs> 300 yards? Course, he solidified his legacy in the unbelievable Beck to Harleen play. Johnny, who is still open in the end zone at Rice Cycle Stadium. Uh, second team All-American in 2006. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, drafted by the Miami Dolphins in the second round. John Beck is our honorable mention at number 12. We love John, especially because we were both in school when John was the quarterback. So, like, he was our quarterback, right, as students at BYU. And, uh, of course, Joe Beck, just one of our favorites. Jason Beck was on the team, so he had Ja, J-A dot Beck. And so Joe Beck uh, was the man, right? We love Jason, too. Though. Absolutely. Great stuff. Hey, coming up. The best to wear. Yeah, love it. Coming up, big deal, no deal. 6,000 Cougar Tales? What? Uh, I'll take a couple of those. Plus, BYU basketball's newest commit, Tanner Fulton, on why he chose BYU. And some parting bits of wisdom before his mission trip, Jaron. This is BYU Sports Nation. Listen to BYU Sports Nation on demand by downloading the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Welcome back to the show. Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. And we now welcome in BYU's newest basketball commit out of the great state of Washington. His name is Tanner Toulson, joining us via Zoom on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Tanner, uh, first and foremost, congratulations on signing with BYU Basketball. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go, man. Yeah, let's go. Let's it's go. Sweet. 
Um, obviously, you're excited, but no joke, this is the final interview that you will do with Wisdom Teeth because you're going to go get your wisdom teeth out right after this. So how are you feeling emotionally right now? Exactly. No, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty nervous, to be honest, but it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> More nervous for this or a state tournament game? Oh, this by far. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's, let's talk about your well. journey. Um, so I used to live in Vancouver as well for a couple of years, 94, 95, uh, well before you were born. Uh, but – we, we know Andy is, as a former Cougar. He's, he's broadcast games on BYU TV in the past. Uh, I've been able to work with him. Of course, Connor was an excellent player at Utah Valley. Uh, Jake, your cousin. So we know a lot about the fam, uh, but this was, this was a decision you still had to make. So mm -hmm. certainly they influenced you, but uh, what ultimately led you to decide to sign with the Cougars? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, obviously I have family ties with BYU. And uh, once I got that opportunity, I feel like it'd be really, really hard, hard option to turn down. And uh, after a lot of prayer and thought, um, I just eventually thought that this would be the place for me. What is a Mark Pope recruiting pitch like as a player? <laughs> I mean, Mark's, Mark's super uh, into everything. He has, he's got a lot of energy. Um, I mean, uh, it, it, was, it was pretty cool, the recruiting process that I went through with him. And um, he just told me what it is and what he sees in me and what he sees me doing at BYU. And it's pretty cool. I assume the family's a big fan of him since Connor went to Utah Valley with him. So what is it that you've learned maybe in your experience now being recruited by him as opposed to being Connor's younger brother previously? I mean, yeah, he's, he's a fantastic coach. I mean, he's led UVU into uh, two, or two or three great seasons or four, four great seasons. And obviously after that, he got the job at BYU. And last year, um, he led them to um, a great, another great season. And we're hoping to continue that uh, in future years. How many BYU highlights have you seen of your dad, Andy? Quite a few, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> he would always pull them up. And I just, um, I, I love watching him. Do, is, it, is it always going to be Andy with the Trump card because he's got the NBA on the resume, right? Um, maybe for a little bit, but hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not when I come to BYU. You're going to challenge that? Exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gathering there's some real competition between uh, you and your brother and your dad. Who's the best shooter in the household right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, we always, we always go to the church and shoot and have competitions. We always uh, – we're, we're all competitive, so it's – Sometimes it ends up pretty bad, but it usually ends up pretty, pretty fun, competitive. So Connor, Connor went to Lone Peak, so you guys were locally, uh, local to BYU there, but you guys end up moving to Washington. Uh, how long have you been in Vancouver? We moved up to Washington my eighth grade year, so we've been up there for five years. Um, I played my high school career there at Union High School. Um, I had great, great coaches, great team. Uh, I'm just super grateful for all my experiences up there, and, but I'm glad to be back. Was that hard? Because obviously when Connor played at Lone Peak, it's a national championship. It's this amazing run, right? Certainly there have been some new coaching staff since Quincy Lewis left. But was that hard to, to end up going to a different high school? You went to, uh, or you went to Union High School mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. So watch, growing up watching Connor play at Lone Peak, I've always, I always wanted to be able to go there. And uh, when I figured out we were moving, I was, I was disappointed, obviously. But um, there was – up, up at Union was something I'd, I would never trade for anything. I'm so grateful for the experiences I had up there and glad we moved up there and got, got, got to play with those guys. Tanner Toulson with us on BYU Sports Nation, BYU Basketball, a uh, brand new commit. For those that haven't seen you play, Tanner, how would you explain your skill set and the type of player that you are? Um, I'm a slasher, a wing, uh, pretty, I can get to the hoop, pretty athletic, and I love shooting, shooting the ball. How much different are you from your uh, cousin, Jake? Because we're pretty familiar with kind of Connor's game and Jake, and there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, yeah. Me and Jake are pretty similar. We can both shoot it. He's probably a little bigger than me, uses his body really well. Um, hopefully I can be able to get to that level, but I feel like I, I'm a little bit more explosive and athletic than him, but he's really fundamentally sound. Is he okay, okay so with that comment? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> me, I, I love Jake. He's, he's, he's a great guy. But. Are you as fiery as Jake? Because he's like, like on it, right? Oh yeah. Um, I would. I would like to think so. I mean, 
but I guess you can't really see that until you see me play. This just in on BYU Sports Nation, Tanner Toulson says he's more athletic than Jake Toulson. I like that. <laughs> oh, man. We, we kid, we kid, kind of. Mm, That's probably yeah, yeah. going to get tweeted out by somebody at some point. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Tanner, Mark Pope said you have a silky smooth jumper. The last mm. player that I described as having a silky smooth jumper, at least on a regular basis, was Tyler Hawes. So mm. does your game compare to what Tyler Hawes did? I mean, it's hard to compare to to him just because he's such a he's such a great player at BYU and has such a great career. But I mean, um, I would like to hopefully have a career like that someday, and to be able to live up to the expectation. In the twenty twenty two twenty three roster, there's eight or nine backcourt players already signed. Like, there's this real nice group forming, right? And Dallin Hall was one of those guys that signed, like you, about a month, month and a half ago. Do you have a relationship with any of those guys that are going to be on the roster in the future with you? Yeah, um, kind of. I played with, I played against and with Dallin Hall when I was in AAU, like sixth, seventh grade, growing up. But um, I haven't really talked to him or the other commits so far. I'll probably reach out to him. But, yeah, it should be should be pretty special, 2022 class. So what's your timetable right now in terms of uh, preparing for a mission? Do you have your call? If so, where are you going? And, and what's the timetable there? Yeah, so I got my call a few weeks ago. Um, I leave July 15th to Jacksonville, Florida. Nice. Oh, yep. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped. But so then after, after I come back from my mission, I'll be a freshman in 2022. That, that's super exciting, Jacksonville, Florida. That's awesome. So you can still hoop it up. Because, listen, when I went to Brazil, there weren't, you know, buckets to be had. Uh -huh. I was the ball around, right? So I'm excited you can yeah. at least go to the gym and get some shots up, which will be good. So yep. What, yep. What, what's it like uh, knowing you're not going to play for a couple of years, yet this is such a huge part of your life and kind of who you are to a great degree, right? You're a basketball player, sign up BYU, yet you're going on a mission and you have kind of this – bigger goal what what's that like as you you wait but you also prepare for that yeah I mean um obviously I feel like the mission is a great thing for me and for me to be able to do that is a, a, a great honor for me to serve our heavenly father but I mean obviously I gotta still prepare I gotta keep in shape uh try to do as much as I can on the mission to be able to come back and kill it at BYU Tanner, we're stoked for you, man. And uh, we're really excited that you're going to get your wisdom teeth out as well. It's, it's life-changing, man. What, so, what, what's, what's a piece of wisdom you want to share with us before you get them removed? Oh, no. I, I, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know what I would say to that. But What, what, do, you, what do you like to do besides uh, basketball? Uh, I, like to, I like to be outside, go play other sports, football, basketball, soccer, um, baseball, just anything to get outside and just, I don't know. Okay. He's an athlete. Like we, like we determined <laughs> earlier, he's clearly an athlete. Uh, Tanner, let's give you some BYU sports nation karma for, uh, the wisdom teeth extraction and for your mission in Jacksonville, Florida. Congratulations again. It's great talking to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Tanner Toulson with us on the Deseret first credit union hotline. Deseret first, you know why we show how. Listen, I like him a lot, um, and it all goes back to, obviously, a legacy coup, and that that matters. Uh, so, you know, sometimes when, when those guys get away, Spence, we go, ah, oh, you know what, but it's going to be – I want the sons and daughters of former players that had a great experience, that can have a great experience themselves and pass it on to their kids. Like, I want that for my kids, right, the BYU experience. And I'm stoked for Tanner Toulson. Also, obviously, so Danny Ainge marries Michelle Toulson. And there's, there's obviously kind of that line. Like, basketball is in the blood of these guys. And Tanner Toulson is going to be another baller, and I can't wait for the 2022 season already. Yes, give me all the Toulsons, give me all the Haas, give me all the Lewises and the Bushmans and the Kafusis. Like, give them all to me. <laughs> I'm all about it. And let's grow some other families, too. Like, this can't be Star Wars where it's like the Skywalkers and, you know, the Emperor and the, their kids. It's like, we need more families as well. All these and new ones, like, and, and the Empire grows, right? Hey, there's a Taysom Hill uh, Nixon family connection coming along as well. So exactly. we got that. We more. Got that. More. Absolutely. All right, man. Okay, awesome. Okay, coming up, a rising shout-out.
Plus, we play Big Deal, No Deal. Making the preseason all pro football focus team as a college player. There are a lot of words there. We're going to discuss with the big deal. This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, the show available anytime on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast, just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and uh, don't sub- forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Jerem, let's play Big Deal, No Deal, presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Big Deal, No Deal. Okay, at number one, Big Deal, No Deal. James, I'm sorry. Jim MB being named to the 2020 All PFF second team. I said it earlier, it's hard to quantify how good an offensive lineman is, right? Unless you played the position or coach it. And in our case, it's like, oh, is he good? Well, PFF says he's good. I believe it. I think this is a big deal. And it starts uh, on the O line offensively. Like, BYU could have a terrible offensive line, great skill position players. But the unskilled position, that's just a terrible phrase. You know, we need to get away from that. But those guys matter a lot. And it starts with James Empey. He touches the ball every play. There are no sports right now. Well, I mean, golf did play yesterday. But still. Bundesliga. Okay, Bundesliga as well. There are no live sports in America other than simulated golf. So, Jerem, yes, this is a big deal. It's a huge talking point for us. James Empey is really good. I like BYU's offensive line. The bigger deal, obviously, will be if – Brady Christensen and James Empey and maybe Tristan Hodge are on at least the second team postseason after the upcoming college football campaign. But yeah, for now, it's a big deal. Okay, big deal, no deal. The NCAA net ranking simplified to a two metric system using the team value index and adjusted net efficiency rating. That's like the nerdiest sentence I've ever said on this show. Well, that's debatable, but it's, it's <laughs> up there for sure. Uh, yeah, sure. It, Apparently, this is going to make the net ranking that much more efficient and better. And um, if it simplifies it while making it better overall, why not? I think it's a big deal. We just know this. You got to play good teams. You got to beat good teams to get into the NCAA tournament. And this new simplified metric will only uh, emphasize that. No deal. I have no understanding of what the changes are. So no deal. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Very good. At number three, big deal, no deal. BYU fans combining to buy over 6,000 Cougar Tails and 2,300 bottles of chocolate milk at a recent drive through event. Oh, of course it's a big deal. That's amazing. Like, these are locals. Uh, some people drove down from, like, Idaho to get some, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, big deal, absolutely. I agree 100%. It's a way to support the cause, support the university, and do so with – the best chocolate milk in America and Mm -hmm. one of the most unique desserts that is available in America with a four foot long maple bar. Are you kidding me? Or three foot long, whatever it is. Cougar tails are awesome. It's awesome. Okay. That takes us to our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance mountain resort. Jeremy, we have a little bit of a thread here. Our buddy, Adam Amin tweeted out, I just finished a two and a half hour conversation with one of my favorite humans and I am in a chatty mood. My Twitter is open until the Popeye's chicken arrives. Feel free to fire away with a question if you're bored. BYU Sports Nation follower at DYoung1993 tweets at Adam, I hope you'll still make at least an occasional appearance on BYU Sports Nation. This is timely, Jerem, because Adam is going to be our guest tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to talk last dance because he's a Chicago guy. I love it. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts. Mine goes to Jesse Wade. BYU Basketball posted some information about him, and it's his favorite superhero is Michael Scarn. <laughs> Michael Scott from The Office. Boom, I love boom, that. And boom. Mark Pope says he's running the Y every day to strengthen his knee. That's a hard hike, even if you walk. He's running the Y? Not hiking it? That's unbelievable. Uh, my rise and shout-out goes to Tanner Toulson for making us the last activity of his life with wisdom teeth, right? That's, that's, that's listen. Well He'll never forget it, and little does he know how much he's going to actually hang out with us on the safety zone. He has no clue. (laughs) I almost feel bad for him, but then again, I don't. (laughs) But not that much. Be safe out there, missionaries. Absolutely. Exactly. Our thanks to today's guest, Jason Ayu, Jack DeMooney, and the guy we just talked about, Tanner Toulson. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We're in quarantine, but no time. We're at home. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUS.
For Jaron Jordan, I am Spencer Lincoln. It's been fun. BYU Sports Nation at home for the first time ever. And a shout out to Vice Sikahemo. We'll see you tomorrow. BYU SN. Go. Blue.